scripture by Deacon Wallace. We're gonna pray. Then we're gonna let Deacon Floyd take over like he always do. <laughs> <laughs> scripture, scripture will come from Psalms 100, New King James. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praises. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all nations. This is the Lord's word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal, everlasting, and most merciful Father, we come before thee, Lord, as humble, Lord, as we know how. We come, Lord, that to give you thanks for thy many blessings that you've stored upon us. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, that you brought all thy people to come to worship and give thee praise and worship thee in spirit and in truth. We praise your name, Lord. We invite the Holy Spirit to be with the us in the way that we should go. Bless the man as he comes to bring the word today, that we will let him down in the depths of your knowledge and understanding, that we will preach the word, and that we will be doers and hearers of thy word. Bless all that have come. Bless each family that is represented. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And as they said, be thankful unto the Lord. Always. I, I come to you this morning because we had a lesson this morning and it was on praise and worship. Some of us may think that we were like the Israelites when we were in bondage 400 years and we crossed over the Red Sea. Uh, I just asked the question this morning, not only for those that are on Zoom and on Facebook, for those that are in the congregation. Have any of us felt that we have crossed over? Have any of us felt that, at, that we have gone through a dreary land, that everywhere we went and all the things in our lives were troubled and chaos, but God brought us through? I asked a question this morning. Are you here to celebrate the victories that God has done in your lives. Because if you are, then you're able to celebrate. You're able to celebrate his mercy. You're able to celebrate his love. You're here to celebrate his majesty. What we must understand sometimes is that we go through tribulation and trials in our lives because it wasn't meant to break us, but it's meant to build us. It's meant to help us grow. It's meant to not only help us grow, but to help others grow as well. So we have a legacy. We have a legacy in this church. This church has been through many a trial, many a tribulation, but guess what? We're just about to come to 100 in 58 years. So do we have a reason to rejoice? If nothing else, we can rejoice in that. We can rejoice that God, even through all the trials and tribulations that we went through, we are still here. Amen. We must realize that all of us from time to time, like myself, we got to step up to the plate. I never knew that I would be doing what I'm doing in front of you right now. Uh, some may say that it may be easy. I may not say that it's easy, but it's a joy. It's a privilege. It's an honor that I can praise God and give him some praises because we must understand that God inhabits the praises of his people. So God wants us to draw. So uh, can we, I, I think I have a song, and it goes like this. 
I will bless thee, O Lord. So can we all stand for a moment, please? Because all of us can bless the Lord. Amen? All right. Y'all know the song up there. Y'all can sing along with I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Yes, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise With the heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee, O Lord I will bless thee, O Lord Hallelujah I will bless thee, O Lord Sunday school, uh, uh, a lady named Marion, who is the sister of, uh, of uh, Moses and Aaron, a after they had come through the promised land, she was rejoicing and she led the choir. She led the choir and dancing, holy dancing, and all kinds of things to praise the Lord. So if somebody here right now wants to bless the old Lord, with a song of praise or with a testimony, this is your time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Is that one? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Again, praise the Lord. I welcome everybody on Facebook and on Zoom 
as well as in the congregation to shallow Baptist church worship service. Amen? Amen. The Lord gave me a word this morning, and it's all about exalting and praising him. It's, it's, it's all about his delight. One of the things that he delights, he delights in us. He delights in us praising him. He delights in us worshiping him. He delights when we lift up holy hands unto him. He delights when we become those who inhabit the praises of his people. He delights us when we love our brothers and our sisters. He delights in us when we share with our brothers and sisters. So God is telling us that he wants us to be a delight in everyone. Amen. We need to show the world, show the world his goodness, show the world what it is to praise, to honor, and obey God. Amen. So this is a word from the Lord this morning. It's all about the Lord's delight. He says this, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we come to you right now, Lord God, we are ever, ever humble when we are in your midst. And Lord God, you have said in your word that if two or more shall agree, even in touching, there I am in the midst. Oh, Heavenly Father, we feel your presence. We feel your might. We feel your glory. And because we feel that, Lord, we honor you and bless your most holy name. Lord God, as we bow before you, we pray, Lord God, that we would be a delight unto you. Lord God, we understand and know even the sacrifices that we do, Lord God. Sometimes we feel it's all us. But, Lord, help us to understand, Lord God, that we are able to do nothing, nothing without you. Lord God, as we humble ourselves in your presence, Lord God, we could pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to hover over us. And not only this church, Lord God, but hover over all your people therein. Hover over our families. Hover over our children Hover over our friends. Hover over our neighbors, Lord God. And hover over our nation. Lord God, that we would be one people that exalt, that lift, and praise your most holy name. Lord God, as we bow before you, we pray, Lord God, that your spirit will move in a mighty way. Touch our lives, that we will continue to go according to your will and your desire. Lord God, help us to understand that as we go through trials, tribulation, and troubles in our lives, Lord God, it is meant to build up our most holy faith. That others can understand that which we do is to honor, to praise, and to bless you. And as we continue to bless you, God, you will use us to bring others into the kingdom of God. We ask these and all other prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
as we move on this morning, we're going to have a open selection, just one this morning, by, by our Shiloh Baptist Church Combined Choir. We want to praise them because, you know, they're going through things just like us. But guess what? They're going to exalt him and praise him. So let us listen to and stand for our combined choir at this moment. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that selection. Are we ready to wear a golden crown? Do we feel that God has put us in that place where we're worthy to wear that crown? If you are, say amen. 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 That's what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. A time will come when, and it may be right now. When some of us are tested, some of us are going to be tried. But remember this, regardless of the tribulation, regardless of the trial, regardless of what you're going through, God has not changed. If he saved you then, he will save you now. If you trusted him then, trust him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. And
Good morning, everyone. Sister Regina, you're just a, a, such a breath of fresh air, man. It's like a spring day. Appreciate your testimony and the way that you come up and you do this every Sunday that you do. I'm grateful for you, okay? Thank you so much. The scripture read this morning is a familiar scripture. We're going to go through Psalms chapter 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalms chapter 23. And I ask if you're able to stand, please stand. This is a Psalm of David. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me to beside he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, good, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. I just read from you Psalms chapter 23, the entire Psalms chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word. You may be seated as we go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we come to you today, Father, we come, Father, joined, united here at Charlotte Baptist Church, Father. There's two or more of us that has come together to worship you, Father, to allow your love, Father, to gather within our spirits, Father, in our mind, Father. Father, we want to thank you, Father, for another day's journey, Father. Father, we want to pray for our sick and our shut-ins. We want to ask you to provide comfort to all the bereaved family, Father. And we ask you, Father, that you allow the man who you have come to preach the word for this month, Father. We know this is his last day for this month. But Father, give him the word, Father. Let, his, let your word deliver through his mouth, Father, so that someone may come up and ask what must it be done to be saved, Father. A lot of choirs just sing the, sing the words of joy, of love, and understanding. A lot of ushers to do their job, Father, to welcome each and every one to this church today. Father, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to just come to, together today, Father, to come in love, to come in peace, and knowing that Jesus Christ died upon the cross for our sins and was born of a virgin. We thank you, Father, for just being with us today, Father. Father, we love you and we care for you and we thank you for doing the same thing for us. Although, Father, everything may not go as planned as we want to be planned, but everything will be done as your will will be done, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. He wouldn't have brought us this far to leave us. He has never left any of us. And he promised in his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us, not even until the end. Amen. So that's why we worship him. That's why we praise him. That's why we exalt him, because he is worthy of all our praise. He is worthy of all the honor that we give back to him. He is worthy to be glorified in all things and in all the earth. He wants us to be a living testimony of his greatness, of his mercy, of his joy, of his peace, and of his loving kindness towards each of us. Amen? Because he desires that each of us individually praise him for what he has done for each of us. So all of us has a song in our heart. All of us have a reason to rejoice. So all of us need to rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. I, I, I am thankful that so many of us have shown up today. Uh, I'm thankful because God puts you here because there's something that he has for each of you as well as for me. God wants us to understand and know that he wants to put ourselves in that place where he desires us to be. And sometimes it's not where we want to be. But help us, O oh Lord, to be in that place that you desire us to be. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, want to, I want to thank everybody that has taken part of the service. I want to thank everybody who has sang a song. I want to thank the choir. I want to th thank Deacon Wise for the prayer and for the scripture. But above all, I want to thank God for your loyalty. And not loyalty necessarily to the church, but loyalty to him. Because we all must understand it is to him that we give honor and glory, always. I'm thankful even for what I do, because if it wasn't for him, I would not be doing what I'm doing. And if I don't exalt God, if I don't praise God, if I don't sing songs unto him, then I have not done what God called me to do. And, and what we must understand also is that God has given something to each of us. God delights that what he had given us, we are willing to give back unto him. So please God in what God has given you. God has made each of us unique. God has numbered every hair on our head. That being said, everybody's different. Everybody's unique. And God has given you a purpose. I pray that you'll find what that purpose is. And you will delight in that purpose. That purpose, one of the purposes is that we love God with our whole heart with our soul, and with our thoughts and our every being. And with that, we can rejoice always in the Lord. Amen. So as we continue this service, we're going to have a selection by a choir, and then we're going to have a sermon. Um, what we must understand is that a pastor has been given a job to serve the people of the church. Sometimes we may not understand the value of what has been placed upon them. We may not understand the message sometimes, but when they deliver the message, it's a message that God gave them. Reverend Dr. Morris Randall has a message for us today. 
In that message, I pray that each of us would have an ear to hear and an eye to see the glory of God. God wants to develop us, to develop us in that place he would have us to go. Be in that place. Do those things. Sacrifice unto him. And we must realize that the sacrifices that we do in due time, we will receive our godly reward. So let us understand why we sacrifice. Let us understand why we praise him. Let us understand why we worship him. Because it's all about lifting him up. It's all about glorifying him and not we ourselves. Because we must understand that with him, we're able to do all things. But without him, we're able to do nothing. So uh, before Reverend Dr. Morris Randall comes up, you know, even though he may not need an introduction, this is a man of God. Even though he may not have a church but retired, but he has not retired from the work that God has in store for him. So when he comes up, let's give him a good welcome for all the good things that he has done, going to do, because God has a blessing meant for him. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to have a selection. We're going to have a sermon. We're going to do an invitation and altar call. We're going to do a prayer list, an offertory prayer, benediction, and closing in that order. Amen. I want to thank you all for allowing me to do what I have done. And I pray that I have been a blessing to God Almighty, because he has truly blessed me. Amen? Jesus is mine. Truly mine. Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I be. He's mine. Jesus is mine. Truly mine. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I be. Jesus is mine. Truly mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be. Mine in the morning. Sing it. All day long. Sing it. Everywhere I be, Jesus, mine in the morning, all day long, singing, all day long, singing, Jesus, truly mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. 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 Something about that name, yeah. 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 He sues all my troubles. He 
Sing a little bit more of that. Just, just, just a little bit more of it. Come on, y'all. We got to get the people ready. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, oh, Jesus. Oh, he's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's soothed all of my doubts. He's soothed. All of my doubts, he soothes. All of my doubts, he calms. All of my fears, he calms. All of my fears, say hey, 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 hey. Say hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. Something about that name. Jesus is mine. He's truly mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, God, Jesus is mine. Truly mine, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, God. You're worthy to be praised. You are awesome, God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for moving right now in Shiloh Baptist Church. Oh, God, I thank you. Little church that sits on the side of the road of Croker Road, downtown Croker. God, you are everywhere, and we know you are here. Give us now, Lord, a word. Oh, God, we thank you because your word is life and your word is real. I need you right now, Lord, and I come to thank you. I come to praise you on this, the last Sunday of September. Oh, God, of this year, a fifth Sunday that you have given us to come into your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. Touch this little weakling, oh God, that is behind this mic right now. Strengthen me right now that I may deliver a quick word. It is in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Amen, 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 amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. It didn't have to be so. But God made provisions in a way for us to be here. Amen. I, I know you all so well that I know who's here. <laughs> and I looked around and I know who's not. Amen. That's because I have a love for God's people. Amen. Now, I, I don't check on them on the first time that they first on there or the one time that they miss. But after a couple of times, somebody ought to get in a hurry <laughs> and start checking on them. 
Now, see, a couple of weeks ago, Brother Wise, amen, had some leg trouble. I believe it was a sciatic nerve or something. Amen. And so, amen, he missed out, and his wife was here. <laughs> Trina? <laughs> Tell her that we miss her and that we love her. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. On last week, amen, uh, Brother Bunty wasn't here. Uh, uh, he had some kind of leg trouble. <laughs> what in the world are these ladies doing up here? <laughs> but he's here today. <laughs> now, Trina, out after her husband missed a day. Now, either don't you go miss no Sunday. You handle things. All right. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Lala, I love you. Amen. Brother Charles told me, he said, you know, I hit a preacher. He always tell me, I hit a preacher. But he hit me with love. Amen. Because I wedded them to some years ago. And they are still together and still looking good. Amen. 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 I, I, I could see, amen, my brother smiling. Chuck was smiling when his beautiful wife and son came in. All he could do was just look over there. Amen. It, it's beautiful when you see your family come, amen, in the church. It's, it's good. And I'm so proud, amen, of my cousin Bobby and his beautiful wife, Evangelist, Amen. Rebecca, who just moved back into Virginia, amen, not even quite two years ago from Pensacola, Florida, amen, where they have a beautiful prayer ministry, amen, every morning at 10 a.m., and I have been blessed to be on that line with the people from Pensacola, Florida, Amen. And they just moved here. And so I, my cousin Bobby is my mother's first cousin, but he's more like my mama's brother. And he's more, somewhat, he's like my brother. Amen. And so, amen. We're grateful for Rob. We call him Bobby, but it's Robert Burvine. And so we're just so happy. And I know Brother Walter know them Burvines from over there. Amen. At Mount Olive. Amen. So you got it together. I saw your, your ears. It was getting ready. Amen. But thank God, I'm glad that you know who I'm talking about. If not, you will. But I'm glad to be here. This is my last Sunday with you all for a while. Notice I say for a while. <laughs> if I didn't do too bad, just call me back. <laughs> Give me another chance, okay? <laughs> Amen. To the officers of this church, I'm grateful for the deacons. I'm grateful for the trustees. I'm grateful for every ministry in this church. Amen. Now, when it says combined choir, amen, I look to see a full choir. So they must have picked one out of each choir this morning. But I'm telling you, this is it. But you all are singing. You all are singing. Reggie, you got them singing, bro. You got them going. Amen. And amen. And when them guitars get to perking up there. Amen. They, they moving. And so I'm grateful. But we're not going to hold you. Amen. We trust that God has blessed you, which I know he has, because you're looking good. Amen. I'm so glad to see all of you. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that within me. Oh, God, thank you. Amen. Ezekiel 47. Amen. Sister Edith have told me all the money I could uh, come in early or telephone in to her or someone early and, amen, have my scripture ready, have the, sec the sermon text ready. But for some reason, some other churches, I've been able to do that. But here, amen, I had to wait on the Lord. Amen. Last week, I, I preached revival at, amen, Lebanon and Amen. I had to call the lady two or three times to make changes because the Lord, I thought, was leading me one way, but really was leading me in another. So sometimes I find it safer to wait on the Lord. And so this morning, the book of Ezekiel in the 47th chapter and the first five verses. 
Ezekiel 47 and 1, in the first five verses. Our, our technicians, our, 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 our techs back there are doing an awesome job, y'all. Amen. And then I look up here, and Brother Walker's doing an awesome job. I see people that have more than one office and doing two or three things. That's what it's all about. We're not a large church. Amen. We don't have a thousand people in church. So sometimes we got to get in the role of doing two or three things. And we ought not mind doing it because we ought to do it with joy. So I do thank God for all of you. And then these ushers, they're always tapping at the door. Don't they look good this morning? Don't they look good every, every Sunday morning? Bro, you look good too long with them. Afterwards, in the first verse, this is Ezekiel now, giving us even a vision of what God is showing us and, amen, a representation of this stream that I'm about to talk to about, amen, is letting us know who we are in Christ. And it says, afterwards, he brought me again into the door of the house. And behold, well, somebody found that. I can't believe it. Amen. Waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront ah, of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And then the man that had the line in his hands went forth eastward. He measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and they were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, were to the lions. Afterwards, he measured a thousand, and it was a river. It was a river that could not pass over. For the waters were risen, water to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. If I were to use for a thought this morning, amen, I would like to use for a thought, amen, how deep is your religion? How deep is your religion? Amen. As you take your seats, amen. You don't have to ask your neighbor how deep is their religion. You need to ask yourself that question. Because only you can answer for you. And in this life that we are living in, amen, we need to have a religion that will stand for righteousness. Why, if y'all want to come down, it's up to you all. Amen. I, 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 amen. Sometimes it's hard when somebody is preaching and their back is turned Amen to you. So if you want to come, you can. If not, you are. It's up to y'all. Come on down. Come on down. Amen. I want to see your lovely faces. Amen. Amen. They coming on down. And so, amen. Many of us view, amen, this life that we are living in in this day and time, amen, as a time of beginning afresh. Each day ought to be a new day to begin afresh. Tomorrow, amen, is not promised to us. And yesterday is past. But today is the day to get your life together. And so we ought to be setting goals for ourselves and making changes in our pattern for living. 
Some of us should begin by saying to ourselves, amen, as well as to others, I'm not going to do the things that I used to do. In other words, I'm going to do some things differently from what I have done. And when we look around what seems good then, and we are able to look back, they was not what we thought it was. Amen. Or as well as we thought it could have been. And so I look back over my life and I realize after thinking things over, amen, that I could have done some things differently than I've done in the past. In other words, I, I, I'm going to make some needed changes. And so I stop by to tell you on this fifth Sunday in September, the last Sunday that I'm here, that there is some changes that's needed in you and some changes that's needed in me. All of us need to make some changes. There are some ifs and there are some buts in each of our lives. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so I, I'm going to make some needed changes that I have been neglecting, amen, for too long. I'm getting old now. Amen. When I was a teenager, amen, I, I thought I would never get old. Amen. I thought people in their 40s when I was a youngster was old. Well, I passed that, but when I was 40, I didn't call myself old. But I thought people in their 50s were certainly old, half a century. And now that I passed 50, what's old? Who's old? Some folks say age is but a number. That might be so in some cases. But in some other cases, age tell a whole lot about you. Because I can't do what I used to do like I used to do it. In other words, my body is giving out on me and slowly I need to recognize that I'm getting older. So I need to make some changes. I heard Paul said, I wish I knew then. <laughs> he said, what I know now. <laughs> he said, I, I would have came to Christ a, a long time ago. Oh, yes. But I come by to tell you that it's never too late. And so I'm going to, to be a different person than I've been in the past. You see, we have all have a past. We've all did some things we ain't had no business doing. Amen. Other of us, us, others of us don't see ourselves making too many radical changes in our lives. Nor do we, amen, understand that we don't need, amen, any alterations from the past. But though everything in our life is not perfect, we are basically satisfied. Some of us are reasonably content. If your walk with Christ haven't grown no more, amen, now than it did five years ago, something must be wrong with you. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Amen. As I get older, amen, I keep looking toward the hills from whence coming my help. And I can say all of my help. That's why I need him so much. Coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And so, amen, the past wasn't too bad for, for us. So we just hope that things will go on as before. Some of us feel like, I'm all right, I'm, I'm all, don't mess with me, things are okay, just like it is, amen. But I, I want you to know today, amen, that, 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 that you need a change. In other words, 
I need a change. You need a change. All of God's children, amen, need a change. Amen. So we can grow in the Lord. Whether we see ourselves making any or few changes, we all have at least one goal in common. Every one of us from the youngest to the oldest, from the richest to the poorest, from the least to the most educated, from the most pious to the most worldly, should have as our goal, each of us need to strive for more depths in the Lord and more growth in God's word. We need to have a prayer life. We need to realize that we are to find ourselves stronger in the Lord. With more depths in the spirit, more understanding of God's word, more commitment to doing things God's way. As we are all aware, there are still unplugged depths in the Lord that we haven't yet reached. And there are height of joy that we haven't yet attained. The Spirit of God ought not to be finished with any of us yet. We can't get to the place where we're just satisfied. I want to get closer to Jesus. I want him to give me a joy that the world can't give me. I want him to give me a joy that the world can't take away. No matter how much we have experienced or think we know, there is still much that God's spirit can teach and reveal to you and I. Well, the Christian journey is something that we must grow into. One does not reach the highest height or the deepest depths by wishing or wanting it or claiming it. I try not to judge anyone's religion, but I become suspected of people who become holy and sanctified overnight. I, I, I begin to, to, to kind of look around and kind of watch a little bit. Time takes its toll on all. We know in everything we use except religion and faith. And so such people that I look at uh, 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 tending and often comes into the Christian life with a bang. They come in all excited, so happy I got saved. I got religion. Yes, but then down the road, they begin to go down with a wimp. Yes, sir, their joy is gone. But when you really find Christ, there's a joy whoo, that can't nobody take away from you. When you really find Christ, no matter what's going on, you know that he is uh, our everything. If God be fire, who can be against you? Oh, Time takes a toll, y'all. And time, clothes that we wear. And I'm coming to the message. No matter how fine or expensive they are, it's going to wear out. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, help me. In time, the cars that we drive. Yes, sir. Uh, their bodies begin to rust out. And their engines stop running. In time, the houses that we live in begin to weaken and crumble. In time, the art equipment we purchase becomes outdated and absolute. Well, in time, our own bodies begin, somebody said amen, I heard you, bro, amen, begins to deteriorate. Amen. Look at yourself. We ain't like we used to be. All of us got some, some, some things going on in our bodies. In other words, we're getting older, y'all. Ain't no use in them men going to the store trying to find a pill or talk to the doctor to keep them young. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. Only thing the daughter going to tell you, what in the world you think? You getting old. Everything ain't going to work like it used to work. Help me, Holy Ghost. In time, the greatest athletes lose their coordination and must retire. In time, the vitality, y'all, of the youth warns, uh, amen, as our steps slow and our energy fades. In time, stars that have been noted for their beauty mm, and whose names were once a household words fade from public Amen. Memory. In time, even the caskets in which we are buried, no matter how much we pay for it, oh, it's going to rot away in dust. The Christian man or woman, however, we ought to get stronger with time. Only the Christian can say, though our outward nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. Yes, sir. The Christian life should go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Every round ought to go higher and higher. Each victory ought to help us some others to win. There should be a difference between my religion now and the religion I had when I first got started preaching. My faith ought to be stronger. I ought to have more depth and even a little more knowledge. I shouldn't be discouraged as easily and willing to quit so readily. My feelings should not be hurt as quickly. I should be more convinced and convicted about the reality and truth of some things now, I should be more firm and resolute about some things and more flexible about other things now. Life, the church, people, God, the scripture, the world should not look the same now as it did for me 42 years ago when I first started preaching. If everything and everybody looks the same now as they did, whew, then I tell you, I have not myself grown too much. Growth makes us see things differently. Uh-huh. You know why, don't you? You're getting older, and you're heading toward death. You can't do what you used to do as long as you used to do it. So you're getting yourself ready to go home. I don't mean to your street home down here. But you're getting ready to go home because after a while you're going to leave here. And you might as well get right with God. Don't wait till it's too late. I don't care how young you may be. God is calling all of us home to a higher calling. And he expects us that when we know him for ourselves to live right. I'm not talking about simply the passing of time uh, because the years can go by so quickly. Some think the same thoughts, talk the same way about the same people and the same things and try to do some things they did many years ago. Therefore, each of us need to look at ourselves and see how much or how little we had in grace, in the spirit, in the knowledge of God since the past. Well, each of us need to look at our neighbor, oh Lord, brother, not at our neighbor, but at ourselves to see how much depth we have in God so that we can grow in the fullness and knowledge of the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to direct us. Here go Ezekiel's vision 
in it, recounted in our text. The land was nourished, O oh Lord, by a stream of water that flowed from the temple. As Ezekiel walked along the banks of the stream, he was directed church at certain intervals to step in the water to a certain its depth. At one point, the water was ankle deep. And at another point, he was knee deep in the stream. He followed the stream a little further. And the text tells us the next time he stepped into the stream, he was waist deep. When he stepped into the water a little further downstream, he discovered that the stream had become a river so deep that he could not stand up or cross it on foot. He had to swim across. Well, each of us should ask ourselves, how deep is our religion? Some of us have ankle deep religion. We can walk through water that is ankle deep. It's generally no problem and it requires a minimum of adjustment on our part. All we have to do is take off our shoes. Oh Lord, maybe roll up our pants leg a little. If you have socks on, you may want to take them off. But then when you come out the water, you can put your socks back on. You can unroll your pants. And it was seen when you put your shoes on that you've never been in the water at all. So I stopped by to tell you today that the Lord is good. And so all we have to do is take off some things. But yet, it is so shallow that we can easily run through it. But after we come out of it, it is as if we never been in it. Some of us have ankle deep religion. Am I talking about you out here this morning? It doesn't inconvenience us much. We only have to make a minimum adjustment. We occasionally go to church or we may attend regularly provided we are not inconvenienced too much. Our pace is hardly slowed. We can still curse people out as quickly. We can still drink as much and clown around just as much. All we have to do is take off a couple of hours a week to run through some church service. We don't have to change our way of living or talking. We don't want church service to last too long. I should have heard an amen there. Or become too spiritual because some folk can't stand a shouting hallelujah praising church. But I come by to tell you that I'm going to get my praise on whether you like it or not. If the Lord has did something for you, you ought to have a praise in the house. There ought to be a praise in the temple. There ought to be a praise in your soul, in your spirit. Something begin to happen. It's all right to take your shoes off. It's all right to take your coat off. It's all right to praise God. Loosen up that tight vest and let God have his way. Get your praise on. Once you get your praise on, you can't run home and tell who got happy and who didn't because you got happy yourself. Don't worry about nobody else. Shouting John said, if I came, if I came shout and praise him in here, I, I can go in my own backyard. You see, there comes a time, and I, I, I remember when things was going on in my life, 
and I begin to praise God in my car. And all of a sudden, I begin to start hollering in the car. And I begin to shout. And I found myself getting so excited. I know God would take care of me. But something said, boy, you better pull over. Don't you stop your shout. Don't you get in no accident. I pulled over on the side of the road. And I begin to let go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No matter what I was going through, I still thank the Lord. We don't have to change our way of living or talking. Oh, come on, y'all. Yes, sir. We are in and out of that ankle deep water so quickly. Lord, have mercy. Most people see no different in it at all. We are still held to live with. Oh, Lord, at home. Some of us in the Bahalians, cantankerous on the job and crossing our daily contact with people, even church folk, <laughs> in the same stream with us, can't see any growth or any difference in us because there really isn't any difference. That's the trouble with ankle-deep religion, y'all. Religion, it may be inconvenient, may be convenient, but it's does not last. It dries up as quickly as the water. We wipe off of our feet. Oh, thank you. Hello, sister so-and-so. It's so good to see you. We go straight to the grocery store. And we see somebody else. We know what we do. We, we turn, the, turn the cart around and go the other way. Act like we never even seen them. Can't even say hello. But yet we in church and we love everybody. Oh, I'm so glad I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But what kind of Holy Ghost you have when you can put it up on a shelf and then pick it back up when you want it? What kind of Holy Ghost is that? When you got the Holy Ghost, it makes you love everybody. It makes you treat everybody right. There's something about the Holy Ghost. I don't have to like your ways, but I have to love you. You don't have to like my way, but you got to love me. I passed over 35 years, and I know there were some people that didn't like me, but I had to love them. You don't treat one sheep any different from the other sheep. They steal your sheep, and you got to show love and no partiality. Let me hasten now so we can finish. Even church people in the same stream are uh, doing the same thing. That's the trouble now. It dries up ankle deep. When we need it, we don't have it because it's dried out. We didn't stay in the stream long enough, and it has dried out. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Yes, sir. We didn't stay in the stream long enough and go deep through, amen, enough so it can saturate uh, by the waters of the Spirit. There are others who have knee-deep religion. Uh, I'm trying to get through this. Uh, it's not, uh, amen, quite as convenient as ankle-deep religion. It slows us down a little more than ankle deep religion. Ah, oh, but not too much. We can run through the waters when it's ankle deep. We can run through the water, oh God, Woo. when it's knee deep. Knee deep. Help me, Holy Ghost. Religion is something to deal with. We got folk that have knee-deep religion. It inconvenience us some, but not too much. We can still keep on the same clothes. We just have to roll up our pants and lift up our hymns a little bit higher. The difference between knee-deep and ankle-deep religion 
is a matter of convenience when we have anchor deep religion. We don't mind being inconvenienced some, but not too much. Some of us want some religion, but not too much. We don't mind getting a little bit of religion, but not too much. We want some of the Holy Spirit, but not too much. Not so much that we can't control it. Not so much that we might have to change. We don't mind going up some uh, and giving up on some of our substance, but not too much. That's up. We'll tip the Lord and give God our leftovers. But we certainly don't want to give God the tithes, the minimum 10%, which the scripture tells us. We give some service, but not too much. We'll serve on some committees and work on some projects provided that they don't take too much out of our lives. People will need deep religion are like the members of the church at Laodicea. In the book of Revelation, oh, whom the Lord said that they were neither hot nor cold, but they were lukewarm. Y'all follow me. While knee-deep religion calls for some commitment, render some service, possesses some love of God and zeal of the Spirit, it will not save us. When trouble comes and problems arise, it isn't deep enough to hold us. Y'all listen now. When we become discouraged and feel like giving up, it can't hold us fast. That's all. When the adversary attacks, need deep religion is not deep enough to shield us. Need deep religion cannot unlock the deep mysteries and the sweetest joys of faith. It's just not deep enough, I'm telling you. Just like we can get out of ankle deep religion, we can also get out of knee deep religion and walk away from it as easily as we walked into it. Wearing the same clothes, looking and acting the same old way. I see Ezekiel walked a little further along the banks of the stream until he was directed to step in again, church. This time when he stepped in the stream, the waters came to his waist. Waist-high religion requires greater commitment than the others. We have to go a little further to get it and we can't get out of it as quickly. We can run through ankle deep water, walk through knee deep water. Yes, sir. But when it becomes waist deep, all we can do is wade through it. Waist high religion has some depths to it. When the water comes to your waist, we cannot hide the fact that we have been in the waters because the lower half of our bodies have been totally emerged. Well, the top of our bodies may be dry, but we still must change our garments because the lower half have been well soaked. When we have waist high religion, we've had sufficient uh, experience with Christ and the spirit to have come uh, to change, take place in our lives. Even though there are some areas, church, that have remained dry, places where the work of the gospel and the spirit have not taken hold, much of our living have been submitted to Christ. And although people will notice the dry areas, they also see how wet we are and admit that at some point we must have had some type of experience, yet 
we must put on different garments. The robes of righteousness and require a different look. Most of our, us are waist high in our religion. That's where most of our members and officers and preachers are found. But most of us are commitment to our God, our faith, and our church are strong enough that we can't simply run away or walk away from them. As I close, we spend our lives slowly fading through this tenderous journey, waist deep in the spirit, waist deep in grace, uh, waist deep in the love of God, waist deep in the word of God. Waist deep in Christ. It's not as easily to pull uh, somebody out of the waters uh, when they are waist deep uh, as it is when they are ankle deep or knee deep in it. Most of us are firm and secure in our religious commitment and it serves most of our purpose. Uh, somebody says, no matter who comes uh, or who goes, uh, we're going to stay with the church. Uh, we're going to continue praising and serving our Lord. Uh, however, the mistake is uh, that most of us make is not striving for something deeper. Uh, we become satisfied. I'm going to stay right here, uh, and I want you to. Uh, but don't get too satisfied uh, because you can go a little bit deeper uh, in your faith. Uh, you can go a little bit higher uh, in your love for Christ. Uh, you can do it. Uh, it's not enough uh, to have a waist deep religion. So I want you to know uh, you have the love uh, and the will of God. Uh, I'm glad that there is some deeper uh, waist high than waist high. Hey, go Ezekiel now. Here's where I'm getting ready to close. Ezekiel came out of the waters that came up to his waist. He walked church a little bit further. Yes, sir. And then he was directed by the Spirit to go down in the waters again. Thank God. Yes, sir. That when he stepped into the waters again, he discovered that the stream had become a river so deep that he could no longer woo, uh, walk through it. He had to give himself completely to it. In other words, he had to go with the flow. He had to swim across. When we experience religion deep, y'all, we need to realize today that it's not enough, oh Lord, just to go halfway. We got to swim in it all the way. Now, I ain't talking about real water here because I can't swim. I better clear that. I barely learned how to float. I remember I was, I was taking a man for pain management at the YMCA, and I'm, hey man, they was helping me because water help your pain. Hey Amen. But I laid there, and all of a sudden, I felt my feet go up. And I was floating. And I'm sitting there just as comfortable as I can be. And all of a sudden, I was in the four feet. Because I could put my feet on the, on, the, on the bottom then. But when I happened to look, up, look to the side, I thought I saw six feet. When I saw six feet, I started to panic. And then I said, don't get nervous now. Help. Ain't nobody come. I a little lot of help. Feet start going down slowly. By the third time, I holler, oh, hell, I was already down in the bottom. Somebody had to jump in and get me out of the water. So don't think I'm talking about the real waters out here. You can't swim. But I'm talking about the spirit, amen, of the Lord. I'm talking about you got to swim in it, in the spirit, to go all the way. When we experience religion deep enough to swim, we don't hold any dry areas back for ourselves. 
I'm not going to finish this message. I can't even finish it. But I want to tell you, you got to swim in it. Amen. Amen. That's why that song said, I stepped in the water. And the water was cold. It cheered my body, but not my soul. Sometimes we got to move up a little bit further until it came, amen, not just ankle deep, not just waist deep, but when it came around my waist, then we need to go a little further. And then you got to say, I want to thank God for his saving grace. Did he save you? Have any savior? Come on, oh, didn't he die for you? On the cross of Calvary, didn't he give his life for you and I that we no longer can go and go waste? Amen. Or knee deep. We got to go all the way. Shallow. Go all the way for Christ.